disposal of the bottle. I have the dishes out here, but you can see they're just covered with mold. It's a slime, mold, so you can kind of forget number one. But it's any feeding on these Quaker oat flakes. It's the same Quaker oat, see, the uh, plasmodium, the feeding stage. And if you don't feed it, so th this has to be over a week old, and there's still no mold on it. Maybe I added too many Quaker oats this time. Man, we can get these grape-like masses of sporangia being produced right there. It climbs up on the dish. Right? All right, now, this one is okay. These are slides now. So number two, you don't have to know the genus. Uh, this is, that's a leaf. The slime mold is right here. It is very, very thin. There's the plasmodium. And this, this is a sporangium, a spore cat sac there. And number three is a very big slide, okay? Takes up the whole slide, so go with 4X. Hold fast. Stipe. I can't even get it all on one slide here. Stipe. And there's the sporangium proper. Uh, and there's the cayumella. These are spore masses here. And the little wavy lines, of course, represent the these wavy lines here. That's the capillation, right? Capillation. And all these little dots you see off to the side. Those are all spores. Uh, there's 10x power. I strongly recommend you don't do that because you'll crack the slide. Do what? This. This is 40x power. That's the capillation. I don't see any spores. You know. And there's the calumella. 10x. 4x and 10x is fine. Okay. Now we're into the oomycotophyllum. Number four, saprolignia. Uh, this is 10x power, which is a good power, okay? What I want you to see is the ogonia with the A. You can see the nucleus of an A here. So these are the ogonia, there's two of them here, with A. So that's 40x power. Okay, this is another genus you have to know, number five and six. Five and six are what? Elbugo, although you don't read it into the life cycle. The blister, see, there's a blister on the stem of Shepherd's Purge, a little bit higher power. See, these are the little multinucleate canidia. Canidiophores, it's nothing special. It's just cells that butt off the canidia. Okay, so that's asexual reproduction, number five. Number six is a stem. Okay, and that's 10x power already. And inside the parenchyma cells, will be the overwintering fungus. I think that that's an egg. If it looks kind of greenish, that's an egg. If it's thick-walled, red iridescent, uh, I think that's a uh, zygote, a resting stage over the winter. Same. So there's a mixture of eggs and zygotes. Egg, probably zygote, the overwintering stage. Okay, this one we have no trouble growing around here. Uh, we're now onto the phylum of zygomycota. This is number seven. We got lots of living rhizopus. Unfortunately, even on the slime mold plates, we have lots of rhizopus. So here's the rhizopus right here. Uh, gently take the cover off and just look at them under four or 10. You cannot go to high power. You cannot go to high power, it's a home up. So four X and 10 X only. 10 is gonna be kind of hard, it's hard to get, see, you know, see what I mean? It's, it's hard to get the light through there, you know? But you can take a look at them. All right, now, uh, for a slide, we have number eight, rhizopus, and these are the zygotes here, and this is a sporangium, kind of deflated, okay? It's orange or red because of phloxene B. Uh, see, see the suspensors? One, two, zygote, 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 zygote. Kind of warty, thick wall, black, okay? All right, then we're into the ascomycota. There's no genera that you have to know for the sac fungi. But number nine, this is an ascocarp, or if you want to get technical, an apothecium, right? Apothecium or ascocarp. And then number 10, this is a hymenial layer of, uh, of, a, of a sac fungus. I think it's Pazaiza. Yes, it is. And uh, that's 4X, how about 10X? Well, now you can see the, the spores are green because they're immature. If they're mature, their chemistry changes and they take the red stain. So you can see the SI all lined up there in the hymenial layer. Now see, you see the ascospores? That's 40X power. Okay, very thick, very thick. 
This one's pretty nice. It's very hard to get one where all eight are in focus, you know? One, two, three, four, five, six, and then they fade out. One, two, three, four, five, you know. So you see if maybe about five or six ask us for it. There should be eight. Well, this one isn't bad. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And a shadow here of number eight. Ah, that's a pretty good one. Okay, now we're into the Basidio Mycota, number 11. Uh, you don't have to know this genus, inky cap, it grows on your lawn. These are gills, right? And so you have to go down a little bit higher. Pow, that was 4x, here's 10x. So you can see how the gills are lined with Basidia with their spores. Problem is, even 10x, you know, doesn't quite do it. Not bad, not bad, but if you go to 40x, now you might see the little spores connected to the basidia. Uh, hunt around because if the, end of the green ones are what? Immature. If you find brown ones, those convex here, see? Those are mature and they're ready to be shed. Okay? Alright, there's some shell, shell fungi on campus. Okay? Uh, polyparous. Okay? Helping to decompose that lawn. We don't have any slides. All right, the big four. Here we go. 12, 13, 14, 15. A genus you have to know. We did the life cycle yesterday. Poxinia graminis. Ignore the AECM on this slide. They're not so good. But look at the spermagonium. That's a nice one. See, sometimes it occurs on the lower <coughs> surface. A little unusual. But see, there's the spermagonium. See the receptive hyphae sticking up? 4x power is, is peachy. You, know, you go to 10x, you know, I don't know. Have you seen more detail? You know, so, all right, so that would be slide number uh, 12. Number 13 is better for the Aesia. Here's the Aesia, the cup, lower surface of the barberry leaf. And these red and green thingies coming out, those are the one N plus N Aesio spores. N plus N, right? Now let's go to the wheat. Now that's a leaf. Look how thin it is. Here are the little Mr. Peanut uridospores. That's the uridium. Not terribly big. Alright, see they have that unusual peanut-like shape. Alright, so those are the uridospores. And then later in the summer, they change into teleospores. It's the same wheat leaf, you know. But you might say, well, how do you know then it's tilio? Uh, there's, uh, right there, I don't know if you can see it or not, but there is a cross wall. One, two nuclei, okay? So that would be the tilium with the teleospore. Okay, deuteromycota, we did these yesterday. Two slides, two genera, you gotta know both. Number 16 is aspergillus. No, those aren't sporangia. Those are really, really, really thick conidia. Okay, see the little conidia coming off, you know? All right, there's a conidio four. And so 10x is fine, although this is 40. Number 17, this is 10x already. You go, I don't see anything, this is all. There, there are tree-like things here, trust me. You have to go to higher power, see? You might say, where are the little conidia, like in the drum? Well, they're gone. When you make the slide, they fall off, you know, they're, they're so fragile. But the uh, tree-like branching conidiophores can be seen here. That's penicillium. That's penicillium. Kind of a mess. All right. And then finally, number 18, no, you don't have to know the genus. And there is no phylum. We just call them form group. That's a lichen. Okay. The dark brown thingies is the alga phycobiont. The stringy stuff is what? The uh, fungus. All right. So if you see stringy stuff, looks like that was holding on to whatever was growing on down there. So if you see stringy stuff, that's the mycobiont. The dark stained cells is the LJ. That would be the phycobiont. Okay. Any questions?